Hello Laval friends, it was another busy week at Laval and I want to talk to you about what's new in the framework. I got some pretty cool new features I'd like to share with you. Let's go! First there is a new event in Laval and it's not another Laracon. In Laval we do have a lot of events like this job queuing event and if we take a look at where this is located under the queue, here we see all the regarding events and yeah we have a bunch of them like job field, job process, job processing, job queued, which we just talked about and now brand new we also got job queuing. So this is a brand new event which is being dispatched before the job is being sent to the queue provider to your queue system. So there might be a little gap between the job queuing and the job is being queued and now with those events you have the chance to maybe measure this time and see if there maybe are issues. Normally there are no time in between so if you use Redis this is pretty fast but if you use another queuing system then there might be a little bit uh, delay and now third party system or you yourself can take a look by yeah taking a look at the time difference between job queuing and job being queued. Thank you Daniel. Next up we have global HTTP client settings for you. Let me show you. I do have here an import provider command so it's a level command which we're using to import some providers and here we are using the Laravel's HTTP client in order to um, make a request later here down but before we want to set some options here and this is what we already could do with the with option method where we define some yeah um, basic options like the base URI um, the timeout for the request how long does the connection take or how long is the connection allowed to take and we also want the token which we get from our config file. So yeah, some basic options that we want to set for our HTTP client so that later when we make the request we don't have to set it here again. So this is already set. So that's nice but if you want to do the same somewhere else you maybe need to set all those options again and yeah this is maybe not so much fun. So here's now a better way to do this by using global options. So for this I'm going to my app service providers. You need to put this somewhere in a service provider. Here we're going to say we're going to call the HTTP client facade and we say we want to set global options here. And then we do the same as before. Let's copy this part here. Let's bring this in here. And now we have already set this globally. So this works now every time we want to use our HTTP client. So this means inside here we don't need to create this client anymore. Let's get rid of this. So the only thing we're going to do here now is use the HTTP client and use directly get the get method and it will work as before. So I think this is a pretty nice addition because it cleans up your code and yeah, yeah there's only now one place where you need to set your global options for the HTTP client. Thank you Tim. Then we have a new string helper that is similar to the given between one but still a little bit different. I'm here in Tinkerwell and we have this example what is new level which is a string and if I run this you can see on the right this is the output we also only get the string here and in level there is on the string helper there's a method called rep which was already before and we can bring in our string here as the first argument and let's say we want to wrap this in quotes for example in single quotes. And as you can see now we get the example our string here in single quotes. So this works as expected and what you also could do is you could say we want to wrap this between two um, other strings. So for example let's make this a little bigger here. Mm, make this a little bit cleaner so we want to have before something. Let's say before I want to have topic and some space and then we also want to have something after so maybe also a space and then an emoji like this. So this now wraps our string here in this before string here topic and the after string which was our emoji. Nice. And now it's um, very similar to this we can also unwrap this. So let's see what happens if we do this. We get only back our string again. 
but maybe more interesting it gets if we just unwrap it from quotes. So let's say we have the double quotes and then single quotes. And now we want to unwrap this from the single quotes. And if we run this, you can see we get back our string. If we wouldn't do this, we just return this. You will see we have our string here with single quotes. So yeah, similar to the wrap method, we now also have an unwrap method, which you can use if you like. Thank you, Steve, for this new helper. And last, we have something new for on-demand notifications. In Lava, when you want to send notifications, you can do this through a notifiable, which is a user, for example. So I can send this, I can use this notify method on the user and then provide a new podcast was released notification or was created notification in our case. So this is being then sent through the user and through the user, we know how to send this. Sometimes you don't want to do this. Sometimes you want to send so-called on-demand notifications, which now looks something like this. We are using the notification facade here, and then we can use the route method on it multiple times in order to send um, notifications of the same notification exactly as this one here via multiple channels, via mail, on our Slack, and broadcast it as well. So this was already working before, and now we get something new which is a routes method, which accepts an array. So what we can do now here is let's try to change here this format real quick together. So we want to make an array out of this, then at the end this, and then I think we can bring this in now here. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, this looks good. So yeah, now we can use the routes method and this accepts an array. And behind the scenes, you can see here where this route method is being defined that we are just using an anonymous notifiable and looping over all the channels and still use the route method. So under the hood, it's still the same as before, but maybe you prefer this way where you just provide an array with all the channels you want to send a new notification to. Thank you, Gelger. I hope you like the new features in Laval and please let me know in the comments which is your favorite one. See you the next time. Bye.